I uh, call Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Yeah, rousing speech from Mr Cosgrove, and in fact he's right on this, and it's a shame that the government actually doesn't put up their head and, and uh, take on board what he's, uh, what he's communicating. Mr Chair, there's a couple of things I'd like to, take, I'd like to talk about on this. Not, not large things, it won't be a long call, but I'd like to talk about Section 70C. Now, um, we, we've heard a lot in the select committee about how the IRD wants to move to an electronic uh, way of doing business, and that's admirable, there's no doubt about that. But um, it, it is quite interesting that in statements in return to R&D tax loss credits, a person must file by electronic means. Now, you would, I, I, I guess we can assume that if someone is picking up R&D tax credits, then they're going to be uh, au fait with the way of the world in the 21st century, i.e. fully electronic. But I wonder if, at this point in time, um, what we do is we don't deem that they must file by electronic means. Maybe we, we just give them a, a, a touch-up and say they may or they should. Because when we have legislation, you, I always look at words must, may, should, etc., and it gives me an indication of what the legislative intent is. Often if it says may, then it gives guidance. If it says must, then obviously it prescribes that this is how, how it, it, uh, it has to be done. And I just wonder if at this point in time we, we, we don't say must, we should have said may, to give the person an option. Because let's make an assumption that the person who is pulling down R&D credits isn't necessarily dealing with computer software or something high tech. They may still be dealing in the backyard, uh, putting together a really innovative uh, idea for the, for the 22nd century, but they are still on a paper-based system. In this case, they must deal with R&D tax credits through, um, uh, through an electronic scheme. But what I'd really like to talk about, Mr Chair, and something that did take a little bit of the committee's time, is section 232B. And what this is talking about is um, offices to maintain secrecy. And if you look at part, uh, uh, page 130, this is um, 232B. Uh, it says, after section 81.4U, uh, you, um, the Act inserts uh, the ability... Well, what it basically says is nothing shall prohibit the Commission of IRD to communicate with an officer, employee or agent of the Callaghan innovation fund uh, for the purpose of administering subpart MX of the Income Tax Act. Now, Mr Chair, the reason this took up um, a bit of our time is when we were talking about R&D tax credits, we, we, we weren't too sure how to define what, um, what was meant by R&D and what wasn't, or what was defined by R&D and what wasn't. And so the government came up with a, so the IRD came up with a view that the Callaghan Innovation Fund was in fact the organisation that would be the main arbiter on whether something constituted R&D or not. The problem we had with that, Mr Chair, is that what often happens, or, or usually happens, in fact the vast majority of the time in these cases, is an organisation comes up with R&D, and, and they're very protective of this. They come up with some new proprietary um, technology for doing whatever, or they come up with a new patent. Uh, they require the R&D funding to actually commercialise it, but there does exist in New Zealand, and I've seen this a number of times, and one particular company in Napier uh, comes to mind, um, there is an element of distrust with the government. I, you know, let's be open and honest about this. Let's be honest about this. Now, this isn't in any way, shape or form to impinge on the integrity of those with the Callaghan Innovation Fund in any way, shape or form. I do, I, I do need to make that clear. They, well, yeah, they, they provide... You know, they, they do some really good stuff, and they're, they are designed. They're designed to. They're designed to implement the vision of Professor Callahan, and he and Professor Callahan was you know, had a vision for how New Zealand should be. He was a very decent bloke. The other thing also is it does say may prohibit. Wait, may, shall, nothing shall prohibit the commissioner from communicating with an officer, employee, or agent of the department that is with the authority of the prime minister for the time being responsible for the administration of the Research, Science and Technology Act. The, again, Mr Chair, I have concerns because I suspect what will happen is that um, a number of New Zealand companies who would be eligible for R&D tax credits, who would, be, who would be eligible for Callaghan Innovation funding, will have a very robust discussion around the board table and they will make a decision that they won't approach the government because there is just, you know, the, the, the element of trust that the IP will be protected just doesn't exist. 
just doesn't exist. And when we say here that nothing shall prohibit the Commissioner from the IRD from talking to officers of the Callaghan Innovation Fund, I think that we open ourselves up again, Mr Chair, to unintended consequences. Now, Mr Chair? Um, Stuart Nash. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, what obviously we don't want to do is to, um, is to create a level uh, or create an environment where uh, where people do not trust the Callaghan Innovation Fund, or they don't seek, but, but, but also, Mr Chair, we don't want to create a system where people avoid tax by going to the Callaghan Innovation Fund. So I think what we should have done, and I, you know, I take some responsibility, because I think I was on the select committee for this. I'm not too sure. In fact, I don't know if I was or not. But anyway, we, we, get, a, we, get, a whole, we get a whole lot of these tax bills coming through. Um, I think we, we, we actually should have set up a system where it was a lot easier for companies to claim their RMT tax credits, not worry about tax implications, but also uh, allay their concerns around the ability or around their, um, their IP. Now, secrecy is maintained by an act of parliament, and of course, what happens is if, uh, if someone from the Callaghan Innovation Fund or the Commission or anyone breaches the secrecy, they are in very deep trouble. But what we do need to do as a government, or as a, as a parliament, I believe, is create uh, a much higher culture of trust in the government. And I know at this point in time, talking, as mentioned, talking to one particular company, that doesn't exist. And I'll leave it at that at this point, but there are some other contributions coming. Thank you very much. Cole Grant Robertson. Mr. Chair, 